Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Trials of Mana. I'm the Mysterious JG, and um, Pretty Princess Angela is still on her, all on her own at this point uh, in our story, but I have a feeling that might not last too much longer. I guess we'll find out uh, as we rest until evening. And nap until nightfall, I see, sleep well. And takes her six bucks, even though we're only going to sleep there for... A few hours. What a rip-off. This guy charging us six bucks to sleep. It is a little funny. The game, um, some RPGs would never do this, but you are forced to spend money at this point. It's six bucks. But, um, oh, looks like the whole city's being irradiated as you sleep. In her little Tsao Tsao yeah. sleeping hat. Huh? So. What's that? I guess you need to wear a sleeping mask to sleep in this town. There's a lot of night a light. light. Am I in Tokyo or is it Vegas? Chase the strange light. See, by the time the light showed up, uh, we were able, me and the Bobo Man, were able to figure out what to do. It was the hour, it was the time before we could trigger, like, go to bed, sleep until nightfall, the light event doesn't trigger. That was kind of the issue. My eyes are playing tricks on me. You saw that light too, didn't you? Well, I'll be. No way, Jose. Oh, wait, you're not Jose. I'm sorry. You look a lot like a guy I used to know. Who would report me to the what? authorities and have me sent to my death. If he could. That weird light was definitely magical. Maybe if I follow it, I'll find the mage who cast it. It's totes magical. Damn it! <laughs> I was still close enough to the door that touching that button would interact with it, even if I was clearly facing away. Hey, what's your deal, buddy? I knew it. I told you I saw a light. Oh, it's that guy. Okay. So there's another guy in town floating around over here, maybe, who is like, I guess I'll hang around here until nightfall because there's nothing else to do. They seem to be gone. But it was the guy who talked about seeing the light who's still around. I saw a fairy in the light. Oh, that's interesting. The light disappeared into Rabbi Forest, I think. JG's marvelous voice acting kicking in here. Oh, she's praying. It's an evil omen. A story and legends say that a phantasmal light will bring the destruction of the town. We're doomed. Oh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're overreacting, lady. I'm sure that nothing bad will happen to a story as a result of this light. The light is a fairy, as somebody else said. Um, we know from the intro. Well, actually, we don't know from the intro. So let me just stop speculating and move on. But yeah, I mean, not clearly. This old lady is just worried about nothing. Only good things are going to happen for Astoria in the future of this story. Combo attacks, repel attack, aerial attack. There's a lot of different ways that we can attack, but no matter what character you play as. Really, like, I guess the scope of the attacks, like your range and how much damage you do varies a lot from character to character, but as you can see, the combos... Then again, maybe it's just I'm seeing those combos because it's Angela, and I'd see different waiting screens with somebody else. So, Lakeside Town of Astoria. Let's not let these monsters hold us up. Monsters, stay away! The light is still moving. And a fun thing is, of course, we can completely ignore the light and just um, head for the yellow star marker because to get there, we have to pass by these checkpoints for the light anyway. I gotta beat you to your objective, light! And never mind, we can't do that. And then light is also... Now I'm thinking of Hope saying light, which... Final Fantasy thirteen. I always found it annoying. Lightning's two syllables. You can get two syllables out, kid. You don't need to shorten a two-syllable name. Okay, now the light is stuck in the ground. Uh, are you hurt? Can you loan me some clothes? 
Oh, she actually needs more clothing too. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm all right. Oh. I'm all right. Who, who are you? I'm Angela, a magician from Altena. I saw. Well, sort of. <laughs> She's from Altena. All the light from Astoria's in. Yeah. Now, who the I hell are see. you? Uh, I have no other option. So I suppose you'll do. Hold on. I'm gonna eat your soul now. Oh, uh, what? Oh, never mind. I'll tell you later. Please. I need you to take me to the Priest of Light and Wendell. Hmm. I can't fly any further on my own. Well, hold on. Let me just put you in my that pouch. That is where I'm headed, so I don't mind taking you with me. But there's a barrier around the cavern. I think we're stuck here for now. Where's she gonna carry this fairy? Maybe in her. her um... But we need to hurry. Oh, I thought of something naughty, and then no, not even Meryl's hiding place. Just Mana? something her outfit kind of reveals. The sanctuary of Mana. Wait. Kind of hide her in the uh, decolletage there. That came from Astoria. Uh, what happened? I need to go back. I left my purse. Oh, we need to get going. Let me rest inside you for a bit. You won't see me, but don't worry. I'm still here. I wasn't worried about... Wait a minute. Inside of me? Whoa. Wait. What? Don't delay. We must see to Astoria. Um... Ah! Her voice is in my head? I hear voices Hurry. in my head. They cast me. They own it. Fine. So, I don't want to get, like, weird, uh, because the same thing happens when you play with female or male character. But, yeah, basically your body just got violated. This fairy just decided to inhabit you. So, why are you heading to Wendell? None of your business. I, I don't mean... know what to do anymore. I'm looking for answers. Oh, she's on a pilgrimage. you haven't had an easy time yourself. But I'm not going to bother to figure out the details. Yeah, that's weird. Why wouldn't Angela tell the fairy who's now inhabiting her body? <laughs> about her problems. I guess she just doesn't want to share her detailed problems with this stranger. But it is a stranger who is now inhabiting your body, so maybe you need to get over that. Oh, you can even be hopping along. As long as you're on the edge of that yellow circle, you can still escape. So I guess we missed a treasure over here. Eep! Can't believe I missed a treasure, eek! And, um... I, yeah, I guess the story makes us come here before we can continue on, but... Let's find out what happened to Astoria, because we heard a noise. Stats can affect moves. Different stats affect different types of moves. For instance, the intellect stat affects magic attack, and spirit affects healing magic. If you have a high luck stat, You'll have an easier time with projectiles and traps. Try investing... something. Oh! Well... Oops, I guess the old lady was right. Wh what happened? Where is everyone? It's not really a cosmic destruction, just kind this of... This looks like the work of beastmen. How... terrible. More of a standard attack. There is no time to waste. We have to get to the Priest of Light as soon as possible. Oh, Wendell is in danger. So this is uh, this is what Kevin and his beastmen friends are about. I mean, he wasn't personally about. Oh, you know what? I probably missed. If there's new um, loots that you can get that you couldn't get before, I probably missed them because I don't think I carefully explored this town after it was destroyed in my off screening. So I missed an item seed and a candy. So again, none of this mattered. Yeah, it looks like there's different item placement from before because I came to some of these places and there weren't loots here before. So in my off-screening, I might have been in a hurry to advance and get to... See, this is all collapsed, but... I mean, on-screen, we... Yeah, I feel like we should be looking to see if anyone survived. And I'm not sure that we ever get confirmation that this was the Beastmen who did this. But uh, right now, 
other than the Queen of Reason, who's specifically Angela's villain. Um, the Beastmen seem to be kind of the villains of the story. Which is a bit odd if you remember the lovable Wolfman Kevin. And that call is labeled Spam Risk, so let's not bother with that. If you can hear my phone going off in the background, if you can't, um, I guess never mind. Well, so far, no indication that anyone survived. The Beastmen, either everybody fled, which I suppose is possible, or everybody's just dead. But again, this is a game with, like, really happy uh, menu music and um, just generally bright, colorful, pleasant graphics. And um, we've already got a mother who's trying to kill her own daughter. And now um, an entire town has been butchered by... Wolfmen monsters. Rick and slopes, guys. You gotta be careful. Can't necessarily trust the Rick and slopes. But I'm pretty sure, I mean, nothing. Item seeds are probably the most interesting and valuable of treasures in there, but nothing really world changing. Um, so I'm not all that concerned about the fact that I didn't get them off screen. But yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything for us here. And it's not really going to do us any good to go back to Jad and try to take revenge on the Beastmen, because we've already established that the one time we tried to fight one, it was like, um, basically, we didn't even get a chance to fight in battle. It was just like automatic uh, story scene. You wake up in uh, the inn resting from your near-death experience. Well, just for the hell of it, we could try to get back up to Jad and see what happens. But I'm thinking uh, more than likely we're just going to see a message telling us that we don't need to go there. But it would be nice if there was something uh, where... The possibility that Angela might want to come here and get revenge. Oh, well, this is actually not the right way to go, but... But there's a treasure chest over here. There don't seem to be any hard and fast rules on how valuable a treasure has to be before it will be in a chest as opposed to just a little yellow spot on the map. Those bees are awake 24-7, baby. No rest for the weary and no sleep for the beezy. That's not really a saying, so never mind. That would count as kind of a low grade pun if no rest for the busy was a saying, and it's not. I don't need to go here. I'm just gonna. I'll, I mean, I'll just end up like the town I'm trying to avenge, so what's the point? Don't know to what extent the, like how precise the stealth mechanics are. Sometimes you can run more or less right through a group of enemies and not get noticed at night. During the day, it's usually pretty hard. Um, oh, I do need to go this way. These guys are already agitated, so I guess there's no sneaking past them. But it doesn't matter. I'm just avoiding combat. There's no point in getting into a lot of combat this early in the game, no matter who your party is. Because, uh... It doesn't take that long before you start getting additional help. Like, for example, this fellow. Ooh. I was on my way to Wendell, but He's got a smile on his backside there. Oh, well, actually... Huh? You've... Got a fairy that can help? Well, he read her mind, apparently. Oh, that's what the light over the forest was. <laughs> Sounds like things are getting interesting around here. If by interesting you mean a town full of people that I grew to love in a short time have been butchered, then yes. So, uh, what's your business in Wendell? Oh, I see. 
Sounds like you had a rough. I guess the game is Me? just going to skip oh, a lot I'm of Durant, her dialogue. A soldier from Volsena. You can experience the previous journey of your new companion, Duran. Play through their past. Note, you cannot save during a flashback chapter. Any items obtained during the flashback will be lost. Well, I mean, if you haven't quite figured it out yet, this is a pretty leisurely LP where I'm trying to see everything that we can. So, yeah, I'm going to call that we go back and we see... Uh, we'll basically be playing exactly the prologue that uh, Duran would have if we used him instead of Angela. So, will this take a while? Yeah, it might. Two or three videos, possibly. Um... You remember when Angela got on a ship, they, they had a um, you know narrator monologue and they played some credits. Duran's adventures are going to probably end up with him on a ship to Jad. So, like, we won't be replaying as Duran, you know, getting fairy and all that kind of stuff or, or being in Jad. But um, let's see what brought ja uh, Duran, no one can beat him, to this place. Which led to him, because that's it, really. He just, like, becomes your party member. That's really all there is, dialogue-wise. And it's another way the remake is faithful to the original. There wasn't a whole ton going on. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm trying to get through this cavern. Oh, I got a fairy. You didn't even have, oh, you mean you have a fairy who can help? Cool, I am now your party member. We will travel together for the rest of our lives Durant, until we save hey, the world. You're up. <laughs> Pull yourself together. Come on, man. Let's do this. Commence the final match for the Sword Mastery Tournament Youth Division. Combatants, forward. Cool. <laughs> I'll break you like a dry noodle. It's Dick the Bruiser. Give it a try. I dare you. Mm. Time I took you down a pet. The Hero King is so involved in this battle, you saw that the detail on his uh, body and face gradually got better during that shot. Bruiser. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get a chance to do a uh, special here. Almost done. I not a whole do lot of not a lot, whole lot of offense coming out of Bruiser. I, I forfeit. I forfeit. I echo. I echo. I wonder how much detail he'll have when we see the reverse shot here. Hold your weapons. We have our new champion, Duran. You've come far in your training, lad. <laughs> Looks like he should be Duran, wiping under his nose with his free finger there, Kingdom of as the he Plains. smiles goofily. His father Loki, the Golden Knight and friend to the Hero King Richard, taught him how to have his hair clipped through his sword. When the young soldier was but a child, his mother succumbed to sickness and grief, leaving him and his younger sister Wendy to their aunt Stella. Stella. Like his father. Oh, I thought we were gonna have a little moment where um, could not deny the pull of he went over to comfort Bruiser, and it turns age, out they're good friends. He outshone all other swordsmen. And eventually, came to be in service to the king himself. So he likes to pull on a blade, huh? Is that what you're saying? Okay, so we got, in this case, it's an orphan. Yeah, all the protagonists have kind of interesting parentage. Well, hold on. Now that I think about it, we got two princesses. Uh, an orphan whose father died in the war and is kind of... He's raised by his aunt, but he's super close to the hero king. We've got Princess Angela. Risa, Reese, whatever her name, however her name is pronounced, she's a princess. Um, Wolfman Kevin is a prince, uh, but his mother is dead and only his father is still around, the Beast King. Then Charlotte... A.K.A. Carly is a uh, an orphan, and Hawk is an orphan who's raised essentially. Hawk's got the best background of all. He's a, well, I mean, not in real life, I suppose. He's an orphan, but as a result, he gets to essentially be raised as a prince because he's adopted by the king, and he's best friends with a real prince. But he gets to be raised like as a, his dad gets to be the king, but he also gets to have the princess as his girlfriend, which would be a little bit messed up. Um. If you were literally uh, the son of the king and the princess was your girlfriend, in his case, he gets to be the adopted son and have the princess's girlfriend. But 
Don't really have a lot of normal nuclear families in our trials of mana protagonists here. Mm. Mm. Man, I'm beat. Hang in there. The next shift is on its way. Hmm. I'll do one more round in the meantime. I see if my voice can sound any more like it's behind a thick armor plate. He's better with the sword than he is at staying awake when on guard duty. And he's really good with the sword. You can see the way that he can manipulate it with his hair. So that his hair actually, uh, you know, the sword actually loses physical presence when it's in his hair. Oh, look at that little Duran. Oh, I guess that's, that's little Duran. That was probably Papa, his little sister. Where are you going? Uh, to get killed in Off war. to slay some dragons. The fearsome beast known as the Dragon Lord is the strongest of its kind. I do like the mustache. But don't worry. His Highness and I won't lose. I'm not going to lose! Oh, sorry, I was trying to do a higher falsetto. Now, I was trying to do, um... Take care of your mother and sister. Passionate arrow, but I couldn't quite get it to work. Understood, son. I will. Bye bye. I'm not gonna leave. I can't do it. I'm not gonna lose. I, I can't. I gotta go an octave low. I can't. Maybe with a wet my whistle, I could do a more annoying falsetto for you guys. Several months later, his Your his uh, family was dead because he failed to take care of them. He took a blow meant for me, causing both him and the Dragon Lord to fall into the depths of an abyss. He gave the Dragon Lord a belly to belly suplex into hell the area for a week, but to no avail. We could only find a month. We could not week. find Loki. I see. Ooh. He fulfilled his duties as the Golden Knight until the very he end. He said, "I'm not going to lose," but he still lost. I'm him. sure that's what he would have won. <sighs> oh, I don't know about that. It's possible he would have wanted to fulfill his duties as the Golden Knight until the end, where he died of old age. But yeah, it's too bad. Oh, Stella. Stella. How could you let your illness go untreated for so long, Simone? Well, it's not my fault. If I mean, I didn't have good insurance. I was ill. He would have neglected his duties for my sake. Oh, man. I just <clears throat> couldn't hold him back like that. So we got double tragedy. And how does that help you're, the kids? You're both such fools. I'm with Stella on this Stella, one. Stella. My children. Please Do don't. Fret, please don't feed them to the I cabal that is secretly them. ruling if this country. Stop the steal. You have my faith. Sorry, I'm a little Q and on there, right in the middle Simone? of a dramatic scene. Simone, Bolivar, Simone, Bolivar. Well, that's my story, Angela. Oh, wait, sorry, it's, it's, my flashback's not done yet. Shouldn't be sleeping on the job. I end up dreaming about a third party omniscient a third party omniscient narrator's view of things that I was present for, but too young to have recalled in this way. What? Whoa. The rumble pack is going here. And I thought I caught a glimpse Don't of a familiar in. figure. Don't give in to death. I'm sure he didn't here. do it lightly. Huh? Yeah, we know that, that fella. We've seen him before. Chase after the interloper. But shouldn't I be collecting uh, treasure <gasps> chests and stuff? Er. <gasps> and additional erg. Oh, it's not going to let me save during this flashback. That could be a problem, because I wasn't anticipating doing uh, multiple videos right now. Guess I will have to get back to this game before I can play anything else on the PS4. But yeah, we saw our old friend the Crimson Wizard, um, who I remembered my last recording. This is like the first video of my second session, which was going to be kind of a standalone video. 
I remember what his name I remembered what his name was the other day when I was recording, but I'm blanking on it now. But uh, yeah, the Crimson Wizard. Well, let's put it this way. I can call it a video now because um, I already know I'm going to have to get another. It's going to be at least another video to wrap all this up. But um, the Crimson Wizard, whatever his name, Corin, I think, uh, in the SNES version. Uh, we just saw him warping around, and it looks like he murdered a bunch of uh, the guards in the kingdom that Duran works for. Uh, doesn't seem like Duran is going to be any bigger fan of the Crimson Wizard than Angela is. The Crimson Wizard is the one who introduced the whole plan, uh, we believe, of uh, Angela's mother sacrificing Angela's life to get the Mana Stone, but it was actually Angela's mother that delivered the, the crushing blow. Um, but uh, whether the Crimson Wizard is behind it or merely a party to it, we're not sure about with her case. But with Duran, it definitely seems like the Crimson Wizard is up to no good. We'll find out a little bit more about that next time. On the Mysterious GG, thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye bye.